So we have one more reader. We had a, an amazing workshop this morning. I know everyone has said that about workshops. And, they, and the first one, I, I you know, just said, do some description. And so people wrote and read, some people read their work. And then I asked them to write again without uh, using visual imagery. And it was profound, actually, what we heard from those same, some of those same pieces. I want to introduce Matthew George, who said after the first pass, I don't know how to do this. I'm not doing it. Everybody else is doing it, but I'm not. Welcome, Matthew George. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, maybe a few of you remembered that I actually was lucky enough to be up on stage last year as well. So I feel uh, feel quite privileged that uh, for the second year in a row, some of the people from the classes think that what I have to say is worthy of being up here. <laughs> uh, I was also asked to mention that uh, at the bookstore, one of my books there is there as well, and I said, no, I don't want to, because I'd feel like I was begging, so just forget what I just said. <laughs> <clears throat> Again, this is uh, just like last year's stream of consciousness exercise, so uh, it hasn't been edited, although I did cheat and add one line uh, at lunchtime, and uh, it doesn't really have an ending because we were told to stop, and I didn't really have a way of ending it, so please forgive me for that. <laughs> okay. My younger brother and I dreaded every December 27th, the day we were dragged to our great-grandmother's house for a Christmas visit. The drive to Toronto took at least a month, sweating under our, sweating under our damp, musty jackets and our brand new Christmas clothes, the clothes we opened two days prior and then forgot about as soon as we realized what was inside. We'd march single file up her crumbling stairs, the crunch of our boots through unshoveled snow, and enter her house, dank with mothballs and vinegar penetrating our nose. With military precision, coats off, boots in line, a hug, a kiss, we found ourselves in a time machine living room, seated next to her smooth, velvety couch where we'd rub the cushions for the next two hours. <laughs> her Christmas tree smelt of 1950s plastic with decorations to match, a strange Christmas mouse that squeaked like a makeup-laden lab rat, candy canes you didn't dare put in your mouth for fear of what a half century of dust would do to your insides. <laughs> and those fake presents under the tree fooling us, every, fooling us every year, shaking a box full of nothing, the most terrible of Christmas sounds. <clears throat> As usual, there was an envelope hiding in the tree's branches, pricking, our, pricking ourselves on fake needles when, sorry, pricking ourselves on fake needles when asked to pull out our Christmas cards, always with a crisp $20 bill in it, as smooth as the day off the presses. 